The immortal pen of James Fenimore Cooper brings you thrilling tales of excitement. Blazing action on the early American frontier. Stirring adventures filled with the daring and courage of Hawkeye, first of the long rifles, and his blood brother, Chingachgook, last of the Mohicans. on your face, I'll say you didn't have any more luck than I did. There's snow and ice everywhere. Same in that direction. Beats me how this fella Hannon keeps saying there's a snow-free pass in these parts. He hear Iroquois legend too many times. The worst of it is he has those women back in Caroga counting on a way west that just doesn't exist. Ladies. Ladies, please, I can't let you have all these goods. Did you get your wagon over to the blacksmiths? They're working on it now. Good. Mrs. Daniels, can't you stop them? I got my regular customers to think of. Well, we're taking no more than we ordered. Well, from the frowns on your faces, I suppose you're about to say, we told you so. That's about the sum of it, Mrs. Daniels. We search for a pass, not find. Snow and ice deep everywhere. Mrs. Shandy's not afraid of snow. Mrs. Shandy's pretty brave. She's a mite stubborn, Peggy. You ladies still plan on pushing on to Ranchy Valley? All trails from here are dangerous now. That's one plan I'll never change, Hawkeye. It took my husband two years to build us a home and send for us, and we're fair anxious to be a family again. White brave. Wait many moons for white squaw and papoose. Fewer more moons. Not matter. What he means, ma'am, is it would be a lot better if you just wait here till after the spring thaw. But we can't wait here that long. We've little money and not very many supplies. The other ladies are in the same fix. As I told them, tightening your belts is a lot safer than chancing those snow-filled passes. But Mr. Hannon says there's a way through, a way kept clear by hot springs under the ground. That I can vote for, ma'am. And like I told you, I'll have you all in the Ranchy Valley by Christmas. Not to be interfering, Mr. Hanlon, but for the sake of the women and children you're guiding, I sure hope this snow-free pass of yours just isn't an Indian legend. It ain't only a legend. Me and my friends been using it quite a spell. Traipsing in and out of Ranchy Valley, snug as you please. Chingachgook and me were searching for your pass. There's no place anywhere around here that's fit for a wagon crossing. <laughs> Great woodsman. What's the matter, a little sprinkle in the snow bogged down your tracking? Well, ladies, you heard him. What do you think of my offer to guide you now? It weren't our intention, Hawkeye, to spend the winter here in Caroga. And if you listen to me, you won't have to. All I can say, Mrs. Daniels, is that I hope his eyesight's a lot better than ours. He is snow blind. He think he find pass. You saying I'm a liar, Injun? All Chingachgook meant was that sometimes the snow plays tricks on people's eyes. My ears understand the King's English where it's spit out by an Injun's tongue. Or by a bag of wind wearing buckskin. Gents, gents! No fighting now. Think of the ladies. The important thing is to get them up to Ranchy Valley. Aye. Mr. Hammond, do you think we'll be able to reach the valley in time for Christmas? Sooner than that, ma'am. Once we get through that hot water pass, it's like traveling on spring grass all the way. Sounds mighty convincing. Don't you think so, Mr. Bragg? For up to me, I'd rather wait till the snow's thawed. So would I, if I owned this trading post. Make a nice, tidy profit having these ladies around till spring ought to sell everything out. Now, you look at here. Mrs. Daniels asked me an opinion, and I give it. So did he. Well, ladies, are you listening to them and spend all winter here, or are you coming with me? I'm for pushing on now. You might as well go along with him, Mrs. Wedstock. You won't be happy otherwise. <laughs> Helen, seen 
is you're so busy, you, you got time for a little talk? I guess I can spare a couple of minutes. I can't seem to get this hot springs pass of yours out of my mind. What direction did you say it was in? I didn't. Me and uh, Chingachgook, knowing the ways of the country as we do, we figured we'd go along and lend your hand getting the wagons through. If we needed help from you and that engine, we'd ask for it. Something tells me you're gonna need all you can get. Now, when you're by uh, White River Rapids, that snow-free pass of yours ought to be north of there. Keep a guessing. Right. Couldn't be south on account of the Willicott River. Well, now, that's something you're gonna have to find out for yourself. Well, you act, Hanlon. A body would think you never heard of White River Rapids. I know White River Rapids better than you. Now, just tend to your own business and keep your nose out of mine. White River Rapids is the same kind of legend as that Hot Springs Pass of yours. There's no such place in this territory. That's the second time you and that engine's called me a liar. I guess me and Chingachgook are just a couple of natural disbelievers. <laughs> our only chance of getting out of here. Me and Chingachgook know how anxious you folks are to get to Ranchi Valley. We'd feel a whole lot better if you'd just wait till we make sure you're going the right way. We can't wait, Hawkeye. Another storm and we'd be snowed in here for the rest of the winter. Better you stay here for winter than out there in snow forever. That woodsman's like a bulldog worrying a bone. He'll chomp on it till he cracks it open in the marrow. He sure ain't swallowed the bill of goods we sold them women. Maybe we ought to call the whole thing off. You keep the other boys waiting for the slaves we promised them? Uh-uh. We'll deal with Mr. Hawkeye and his Indian friend as we have to. No use, Mrs. Wedstock. The blacksmith needs a couple more days to make a pin for that whipple tree. Well, I don't understand. He told me yesterday the only thing wrong was that cracked rim. Yeah, and he fixed it. I thought maybe I'd have something he could use in place of that pin, but I didn't. Well, what do you suggest we do, Mr. Hanlon? The only thing we can do, Mrs. Daniels, we'll put half of the women from the Wedstock wagon into yours. The other half can go with Saunders. But what about us? You can't leave us behind. Don't intend to. Could be a mite crowded, but we'll find room for you and your family somewhere. Indeed we will. But I can't leave my wagon behind. Everything we own is in it. The only thing we can do, Mrs. Wedstock, we've got a long way to go, and we can't chance any more delays. Don't mean to be interfering, Mrs. Wedstock. Maybe there's something we can do to help you. Nobody's asking you. Now, let's hear him out, Mr. Hanlon. Do you have a way of fixing the wagon? No, ma'am, that's a job for the blacksmith. But when he's done with it, me and Chingachgook could follow your trail and bring it to you. His light wagon. Catch up fast. Oh, well, that's a wonderful idea. What do you think, Mr. Hanlon? I'm not objecting. First bit of sense to come out of that woodsman. All right, everybody, let's get loaded. What do you want Hawkeye and that engine friend of his tagging along for? Why not? At least we'll know where to find them if we want them. All right, let's get things moving. Still doubting they'll find that pass, Hawkeye? That's right. They're not going to find anything more than me and Chingachgook did when we follow, as soon as they're out of sight. Didn't you say you were going to drive the Woodstock wagon? Blacksmith says it won't be ready till tomorrow anyway. My brother Hawkeye, not need blacksmith. <laughs> Ladies, 
Yankees fall out. Four hours of being cramped in them wagons enough. We'll be taking a rest here first, foul. You boys are going on a hunting trip. What fur? We got enough food for ourselves. The women folk can look to the Ottawa's for their vittles. Wasn't thinking of that kind of hunting. The game you're going after can shoot back when you let them. Hanlon sure changed his mind fast about us coming along. Maybe he have good reason to know where we are at. But why he's so anxious to take white squaws on such dangerous trail? That's a good question, my brother. And it's one that we must find the answer to. Sure? First shot. I drilled that engine right through the heart. And I left the great Hawkeye with a ball of lead right smack between the eyes. Good. Now, let's not keep Chief Tomeska and his Ottawa's waiting for the slaves any longer. Peggy! Maybe she's over in the other wagon. Tomeska ought to pay us a pretty good price for that, young un. Where'd she come from? Mommy, Mommy! They're gonna take us to Indians! Oh, darling, what are you talking about? Come on, let's hitch up the horses. We may have to ride close herd now, ladies, from now on. Mommy! No, darling, we haven't got time to see Mr. Hammond. calling us. Here we... You've bled a lot, but you're gonna be all right. But my brother Hawkeye. He not hurt. No, I just played possum so the bushwhackers would leave. White squaws in bad trouble. Need help fast. We go on foot. Wagon make too much noise. You stay put. I'm going alone. Where my brother go, I go. If you were any weaker, you'd be needing a cradle. <laughs> Me not papoose. Me go. Now you just stay put. You've lost a lot of blood. You'll be snug here for a while. As soon as you feel able, drive the team back to the settlement. Tell them what's happened. said Ottawa's. Mr. Hanlon says that he's going to get a good price for Ronnie. Peggy's not one for making up tales, Mrs. Daniels. Well, I just can't believe it. Why, Mr. Hanlon and his friends even refuse payment for guiding us. Maybe with good reason. They're planning to sell us into slavery to the Indians. Oh, the child's making it up. Now, aren't you? 
Mrs. Shandy was with me. She heard him too. Didn't you, Mrs. Shandy? Well, look, if they weren't scouting for engines, they would have gone ahead of us. Ain't that right? Well, then why'd they go back trail? And he shot Hawkeye. I heard them say so. Judging by the looks on your faces, I'd say little Mrs. Shandy's been talking out of turn. Then it's true. You don't have to worry, ladies. The Ottawa's won't work you too hard. Might even marry and take you and your little ones into the tribe. Oh, you foul son of Satan. Watch your tongue. I don't want any trouble from you, ladies. The Ottawa's won't pay much for damaged goods. Regular little warrior, ain't he? You'll be good and maybe the chief will keep you all together. You filthy beast. Maybe I'll keep this one for myself. I'd rather be slave to the grubbiest Ottawa. You'll get your way. We'll start with her, chief. How much? Four beaver. Man-child, two. Papoose, one. Oh, well, they're all good and sturdy, chief. I figured on getting at least four hands of beaver pelts for the women. Two hands. Four for the young ones and three for the older ones. Scores three hands, no more. You got yourself a deal, Tamiska. Bring birds. You heathen devils. We'll die before we suffer ourselves to be your slaves. I never seen so many prime pelts in my life. Just remember, two-thirds of them is mine. When we leave here, all our weapons are gonna be in my wagon. What about the furs for the youngins, Chief? Greetings, Temiska. I come in peace. Greeting, Hawkeye. Temiska's lodge, your lodge. The welcome of Temiska is known beyond the land of the Ottawas. Even as other tribes know the justice of Ottawa law. Manitou give Ottawa law. And I reckon Manitou wouldn't like you having slaves that were not taken in battle, Chief. This hunter of squaws stole those white women, Chief. He hasn't the courage to do battle with men. You say you not steal white women. Oh, well, what's the difference, Chief? They're here, ain't they? You hear, Tamiska? He speaks with the tongue of a serpent. Under the eye of Manitou, I'll fight him for those captives. If he wins, they stay. If I beat him, they go free. Don't listen to him, Chief. Let me and my friends take care of him. Wait. You wise in Ottawa law, Hawkeye. Manitou, place hand on true one. Ottawa takes slave only from battle. Test of knives prove who speak with straight tongue. Hawkeye die, Temiska buy captives. What's the sense of this, Temiska? We went to a lot of trouble bringing them to you. Test of knives for eyes of Manitou only. 
They may call you Hawkeye because you're good with a gun. Or with a knife. Carl Hanlon skewered many a man without getting nary a scratch. Go! Manitou has spoken. The captives are free. One piece for the trial. Ottawa law is good, Chief, but remember, before Manitou, no man or woman should be a slave, whether red or white. The bravery of Hawkeye will make Tamiska remember. This is Shandy. Meet your new sister, Matilda. Well, this is the first time we've ever celebrated Christmas in the spring. Well, a cup of cheer tastes just as good in April as it does in December. <laughs> when all people are happy, not matter what season. And we couldn't be happier. Thanks to you both for bringing us together and making us a real family again. Hawkeye, Mrs. Shandy loves you and thanks you. Well, thank you, Mrs. Shandy. <laughs> Mrs. Shandy loves you and wants to thank you, too. Oh, yeah. Mrs. Shandy is a very smart lady. She knows that now is season for everyone love each other. Join us again at this same time next week for another of James Fenimore Cooper's gripping tales of the early American frontier. Another exciting adventure of Hawkeye and his blood brother, Chingachgook, last of the Mohicans.